Hi, Sandra here from Create in Spain and today I'm starting a series of tutorials on GIMP. GIMP, if you're not familiar with it, is an image editing program similar to things like Photoshop, Corel, PhotoPaint, that sort of stuff. Except for one really, really big thing. It's free, as in no charge, nothing. And that makes it extremely good value, but it's also a very, very powerful program. Uh, the reason I'm making these tutorials is because I have started to use GIMP, and I must admit it's very difficult to learn without some kind of help. Um, I'm lucky in that I have used graphics packages before but I haven't used them for a long time and so although I might have understood a few bits and pieces my mind's decidedly rusty and I've really had to learn it from scratch again. Now if you want to download GIMP if you do a Google search you will put in GIMP G-I-M-P and do a search and you'll come up with a home page you'll find where to download it and at the moment the download version the latest one is 2.8 so download it and open it as you would open any other program in your particular computer. Please bear in mind that my computer is a Mac, so for most instances that's not going to make any difference to you at all. What it may make a difference to is how your computer stores and saves your files. The file directories may be somewhat different if I ever get into that with you. But for the most case, it'll be the same. It might look slightly different, I guess. Um, but it's going to be pretty much similar. When you have got GIMP, you can open it up. And this, I gather, is Wilbur. Wilbur is the GIMP mascot. He's quite cute. So you open up GIMP. Now, you may be faced with a screen, which is just this image screen. Or you might, if you're lucky, have a couple of boxes on either side. If you don't have these, don't fret, I'm going to show you how to get them. Now, my use for GIMP is for crafting. It is not going to be for the heavy-duty photo editing that photographers might want to do. I'm not into that for this particular set of tutorials. This is for people who want to do scrapbooking, card making, um, crafting in general, people who want to learn text manipulation to make logos, labels, people who want to cut images out of backgrounds and cut them out on cameos and portraits and other cutters. Um, that is what I am going to be showing you how to do in these tutorials, not heavy due to your photo editing. So if that's what you're wanting, please feel free to look somewhere else. You're not going to be happy with what I'm doing. Okay, so to start off with, if you don't have these, how do you get them? Now, what you have to do is make sure you selected your program, because previously mine was on QuickTime, which is how I'm recording this. So I've clicked on this bar here, and I've got my program. Whoops. <laughs> got my program active. Shouldn't have tried doing that stuff. Click on Windows and if you click on Toolbox, this box here will appear. Now it may appear skinny, it may appear fatter, it may be somewhere else on your screen, but it will appear. You can alter the shape of it by dragging the side in or out. Okay, so I'm going to stick with that, I think. Go to Windows again and go to Dockable Dialogues. And if you don't have this one on the right hand side, click on Layers and you will get a box which has this little symbol in it, which is the layers. Now, there are several things that I want you to have in this box, so I'm going to go through. So you click on Layers and you'll get a box open like this and then you can click on the little tab on the right hand side here and then you can go down to the add tab and when you do that your options appear. So 
The next one I want you to add, going down the list, is Undo History. So click on that one and then go back to your Add tab again and add Palettes and Undo History. Okay, so if you've got all of those, you will have in whatever order they've appeared, you will have all these that I've got here. Now at the moment, these boxes are what they call us as floating, they can move around. But if you are happier with something which is all in one piece, go to Windows, drop down Single Window Mode, and voila, it will go to Single Window Mode, which is probably something you're a little more familiar with. I'm going to stretch this out. So this little um, dotted area here allows you to make your toolbar wider or narrower. If you go down to this corner, you can stretch it. At least I would if I could grab it. And my mouse doesn't seem to want to grab it. There we go. Okay, so you still have your exact same window there with your exact same tab and the same things on this side, but it's all attached to each other and, yeah. If you decide you don't like that, just go to the windows and click off of it again, then you'll end up with the separate bits as they were before. Okay, so your choice. Now these, at the moment, are the only things that I want you to have in your display. So I'm going to say goodbye now and the next video we will actually start using the program. But if you set it up like this, you can follow along with what I do later and that's the intention. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.